compared to the grandpa driving on a Sunday, just sitting in the right lane, 15 miles an hour, mm, can't gain any fat or refuse to gain any fat. You're wasting time is what you're doing. Chest up, shoulders back. Welcome to Revival Fitness, everybody. I'm your host, MK Angeletti. So if you're new to this channel, first time here, welcome. If you are a Coach Greg fanboy, you might already be losing your mind in the comments section. You're not as big as Coach Greg. You're not a number one bodybuilder. You're not a powerlifting champion. I'm not claiming any of those things. And I'm not sitting here saying Coach Greg is wrong. I'm not calling him out or anything like that. This is just a simple retort, a rebuttal to his main gaining video. So I can't claim to be bigger, stronger, faster, whatever than him. What I can claim is years of experience training under the main gaining diet. And I can tell you from that experience that for a lot of you, it is not going to be optimal. So before we go on, we need to establish something. Coach Greg is genetically gifted. I have very good genetics to be able to be at this point. He's probably in the top five or 10% genetically in the world. He has powerlifting records. He's won bodybuilding shows. He does high volume cycling constantly. So we have to establish that premise because that's going to guide us through the rest of this video. So Coach Greg is genetically gifted. But what about the rest of people who watch YouTube fitness? What do you always see, guys? Oh, skinny guys do this. Hard gainers do this. Build muscle this fast, right? And I can't promise a lot, but I can promise you this. If you are a skinny guy, a hard gainer, somebody who struggled to build size and strength in the gym, following the main gaining diet for a prolonged period of time is going to leave you in the dust. You're going to leave a lot of gains on the table. So before we jump into Coach Greg's video and the rebuttal to that, I'll just give you a quick personal antidote. When I first started training, which was about four years ago, I was 160 pounds. But in terms of training itself, once I discovered compound lifts, right, a good five by five program, kind of the basics of getting bigger and stronger, I did the whole kind of main gaining thing. Because, you know, as a young guy, especially, you're so concerned with your abs. Oh, the abs, I gotta stay lean. Because you always imagine you're gonna just plopped on a beach, right? And there's gonna be eight babes next to you. And you're like, oh, if I don't have abs, they're not gonna like me. They're not gonna like you anyway, all right? But I made this mistake and it took me three years, guys, three years. Again, this was pretty much as a rank beginner to gain 10 pounds of muscle. It took me three years to go from 160 pounds to 170 pounds. Now, I know some of you who are all skinny, you're like, wow, that's a lot of muscle. For beginners, it is not. That is far behind the marker. I might be the first to tell you guys, but if you're a rank beginner or somebody who's been in the gym for a few years and you've never really done a structured program, you can gain up to 10 pounds of muscle in a year, naturally, as a beginner. Three years to gain 10 measly pounds. I could have gained that 10 pounds. Those are my beginner gains, right? The newbie gains. I could have gained those in one year if I had just eaten in a surplus and not been so concerned with, oh, I gotta stay lean, the abs, the abs, everybody's so obsessed with the abs. And if I had done that, I would be bigger and stronger today. So with that in mind, let's review Coach Greg's video. And their goal is maximum muscle to be ripped next year for the beach or wedding, okay? We all wanna build as much muscle as we can and we wanna get leaner. He gives a pretty standard goal of getting as big as possible then getting as shredded as possible in time for the beach over the span of one year. And there's nothing wrong with that. What is wrong though is the assumption that most people have because fundamentally you cannot have the best of both worlds. And this is where so much of the delusion and fitness culture and the fitness industry comes from. It's a bunch of genetically average people on no PEDs comparing themselves and taking advice from genetic freaks on PEDs. You are not going to be able to maximize size and shreds at the same time. When one goes up, the other goes down. And plenty of experienced lifters have talked about this. Bugenhagen covered it on his channel. Mike Isratel has done tons of lectures on this topic. So Greg gives us three examples in his video, person A, B, and C. 20% body fat, so not bad, decent shape, not shredded or anything. So person A cuts for six months, and Coach Greg says he's going to cut from 20% to 10%. In that six months, Coach Greg says person A is going to gain three pounds of muscle. Three pounds of muscle gained in a 10% cut. That alone is a red flag, but we'll keep going. Person B starts at 20%. They main gain for six months, they stay 20%, they gain four pounds of muscle. Person C, 20%, they decide to bulk and Greg makes them do a dirty bulk. So they go up to 30% body fat and they gain five pounds of muscle. That's the first six months. In the second six months, the second block of the year, person A main gains and they gain one extra pound of muscle. Person B cuts down to 10%. There is no change in their muscle. 
Person C gets out of their dirty bulk and they do a super cut. They go down from 30% to 10% body fat and lose one pound of muscle. So they all start at 20% body fat, all end at 10% body fat, and they all net four pounds of muscle gain according to Coach Greg. So there's a few obvious flaws in Greg's logic here. One, he mentions throughout the video, he's like, it doesn't matter if these people are natty or enhanced. Add in gear, whatever, they all gained 14 pounds. Whatever, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. You're telling me PEDs don't affect this at all, coach? What are you, a moron? So let's take the person B example he gives. Let's say it's person B, two identical twins, same genetics, okay? You're telling me somebody who's cutting 20% to 10% naturally isn't gonna lose a little bit of muscle? Not even a little bit, not even half a pound or a pound. On the same token, you think somebody who's on PEDs isn't going to lose less or potentially even gain muscle when cutting from 20% to 10%? Even if it's a slow cut, okay? Unless you're a total beginner, that's not happening. If you cut from 20% to 10, I don't care how slow or drawn out it is, you are going to lose some degree of muscle mass, okay? Less calories means less muscle mass fundamentally. Person A, they didn't gain as much muscle because they weren't bulking, sure. Okay, he says that somebody's going to go from 20% body fat, cut down to 10%, but they're somehow going to gain three pounds of muscle in that time. They cut slowly during this time, not a lot, small deficit, and they creep down to 10% six months from now, they've gained three pounds of muscle. They have really good genetics. In what universe is an experienced lifter, again, not somebody who's totally new, in what universe is somebody who has skin in the game, a few years of training experience, ever going to cut from 20% to 10% and gain three pounds of muscle at the same time? That's only gonna work if you're overweight to begin with, because you already have excess energy stores. But for, again, we're looking at it through the lens of a skinnier guy, that's never gonna work. I know Greg is big on the whole anti-obesity thing, and you should be. Nobody should be promoting obesity or excessive dirty bulking, okay? But what skinny guy is going to magically get obese by upping their calories? That doesn't happen. They're skinny for a reason, guys. They're hard gainers for a reason. They can barely eat enough as it is. Option C, you're obese. So during that bulking phase, your blood pressure could go up. You're putting more strain on your body. Cholesterol, all the bad things. It's not good to be obese. Greg seems to think that bulking automatically means dirty bulking. And we know that's not the case. You hard gainers know this already. You guys eat all this food, or at least you claim or think you do, and you can't gain weight. So the only logical option is to increase your food. Okay, unless your training is absolute garbage, your recovery is absolute garbage, you need more food. I know you don't want to hear that, but that's the truth. You're not going to be able to get these maximum gains by doing this itty bitty hundred calorie surplus or maintaining. That's just not how it works. And if you're really scrawny or weak, if you're a true hard gainer, that bulk might be one, two, three years. Again, I know, you, no abs for three years? What? What? You start to have a panic attack. That might be how it is, guys. Guy with bad genetics and they gained all two pounds at the end of the year. Abs aren't the answer to fitness. Abs are not the end all be all to fitness. Now would I be a little bit heavier than I am now? Potentially. But again, it's not a big deal. You can easily just do a nice simple cut over the course of a few months. You're gonna keep not all of your muscle, not all of it. You're gonna keep a good amount of it though. Okay, and you would have more strength to back that up anyway. Okay, as opposed to again, this little Little engine that could, chugging up the hill, maintenance calories, maintenance calories, gaining two pounds a year. Would you rather gain 10 pounds of muscle and five pounds of fat in one year? Or would you rather gain 10 pounds of muscle and one or two pounds of fat in three years? You're fundamentally wasting time. And Greg also makes a comment too, how you can't will your body into making muscles. You can't just will your body to do that. You can't just convince it to gain that by thinking and wanting it to happen. And he's not totally wrong. You can't just force your body to make muscles. But guess what, coach? You know this. More calories give you more chance to build more muscle. Person A, they didn't gain as much muscle because they weren't bulking. Sure. That's how it is. If you're absolutely addicted to your abs, you're going to get used to slow progress. You have to get used to it. So if you're one of these guys who is an actor, a model, just absolutely attached to your abs, then main gaining is good for you because you're always gonna have that semblance of your abs. You're always gonna be there. You can cradle them and lie in bed at night and be, I have my abs, thank you, Jesus. But you also are gonna look around the gym and see guys who are pushing more, deadlifting more, squatting more, bigger than you. That's gonna weigh on your mind too. And again, like I said, unless you're a genetic freak or willing to take PEDs, you're never gonna catch them. So you gotta decide. So I believe main gaining is optimal for somebody who just refuses to lose their abs, okay? If that's you, then that's your prerogative, go for it. 
people past their genetic prime or hormonal prime, right? Once you're like 30, 35, it is much harder to stay lean. So main gaining makes more sense there. And if you're overweight or obese to begin with, main gaining makes sense. But even then you could just gain muscle and lose weight and still cut at the same time. But if you're somebody who's serious about size, strength, okay, if you wanna compete in bodybuilding one day, compete in powerlifting, or if, even if you're just recreational and want to be as big and strong as possible, main gaining is not the answer. Dirty bulking, getting fat is not good, but neither is wasting your prime years of size and strength just because you're terrified of losing your abs. And here's a bonus tip too. This is more true the younger you are. If you are eating in a surplus, you're still probably gonna have an outline of your abs. Okay, if you're in the gym week in and week out, consistent, pushing yourself, training harder than before, right? You're probably gonna have an ab outliner, like the two pack, right? You're not just gonna totally spill over. Again, if you do totally spill over, then just lower the calories a little bit. That's the sign that you're overdoing it. But if you're gaining muscle and a little bit of body fat, but you still got the abs, what's the big deal? Okay, I know in the whole bodybuilding fitness world nowadays, right? 5% is like the gold standard. You, uh, Coach Greg talks about it too. He's like, oh, I don't feel good at 5% body fat. I don't feel good at 5 or 6% body fat. No shit. Nobody feels good at 5% body fat, dude. It's not normal. It's not healthy to be that low body fat. But the current bodybuilding culture, right? You see somebody like, look at this picture of Arnold I got. Back in the day, this guy was a god. Okay, if this guy stepped on a bodybuilding stage now, what would you hear? He's not conditioned. He's not lean enough. Do you really value the super shred, the six pack that much that you're willing to sacrifice size and strength in the long run? Do you really think the girl on the beach you're going to see and not even have the balls to talk to is going to see you and be like, oh my goodness, my knight in shining armor has a six pack. Oh, she's going to faint. No, she's not. So what's optimal then? I think for most people, 12, 15% body fat is where you're going to be. That's athletic body fat, guys. Look at most pro athletes. Okay, and don't just show me some wide receiver for some team who runs a 4-2-40, okay? Don't show me Tyree Kill. Linebackers, centers in basketball, baseball players. Most of them have a little more body fat. Why? It aids their performance. It helps recovery. It helps their strength. It helps all of those things, okay? You guys have to stop conflating leanness and super shredded abs with fitness and athleticism. Those are not the same. 15% body fat is going to be the point where you can maximize size, maximize strength, and still keep a lean midsection at the same time. You might not have your super precious six pack V cut abs, but you're going to have a lean midsection. Any random girl or any person you see on the street is going to say you're ripped. And besides the world's ending too. Why not just eat more? So that is it guys. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and join the gang train. We are nearing a thousand subscribers. I can finally start making a few pennies from these freaking videos. So if you guys would subscribe, that would be much appreciated. Let me know what you would like to see next in the comments. Coach Greg, if you're watching, I look forward to your response and I will catch you all next time.